How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning SRPG Studio. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some auto events and victory conditions. Let's jump into the project. I've got one map set up. I'm going to click on that and open up map. I'm going to move over to the event mode. When I double click in event mode, I have the option to place events. I'm going to place one village location event type and give it some event commands. So this is a location event type village. I've created event command and I've change to switch. The location event type for village will let the player walk over it and have an extra option. When the player walks over a tile that has the village event type, they'll get the option of village. They can click on an extra button at the end of their turn before they end their turn. When the player clicks on the village button, all of these event commands will execute. Let's take a look at this. I've selected change switches and I've got a local and a global. We're only using the local, but I wanted to show them both. When you first create a switch, it will give you this menu. Create event command, you click on change switches, and then you can create a switch, name it, and give it an icon and everything. You can also left click it to specify if that's going to be turned on or turned off. If you don't specify, it really doesn't do anything. I've created a local and a global switch called Captured Castle and turned them both on. So when the player walks up to this tile and executes the village button, it's going to turn on two switches, a local and a global switch. We're only going to be using a local. A global switch will affect other maps. A local switch will only affect this map. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at this little button that says AT. That stands for auto events. Auto events are how you set up your victory conditions and how you specify when things happen. If you want the game to be completed to have a victory screen, you're going to have to set that up with auto events. You can set that up with a switch or without a switch. Let's look at how you would do it with a switch. If you wanted to set it for a switch, you can create a new event. You're able to right click and rename it to whatever you want. I'll call this one enemies dead. It's completely arbitrary what you name your events. When you have created them, you'll have the option to add requirements for this auto event to run. Auto events happen automatically, but you have to specify when you want them to run. You use this conditions page for them to specify that. You click the three dots and you specify using all of these possible conditions. So everything in here is a way for you to specify when you want something to run. And you can use multiple conditions as well. So in this one, all I've done is required that the local switch captured castle be on. I've got that set up. I hit OK. That's why I have the local switch captured castle on as a requirement for the victory screen to play. Once we've set up the name of the event, the event conditions, we can select create event commands to set up what we want to happen when all of these conditions are met. I've put in a show message and this is a simple message that just shows the hero's face saying the castle is cursed and you can select what face you want to play. Then I've done a unit transformation, turning the hero into a skeleton and executing that move. And then I've done a chapter complete. This is how you beat, this is your victory condition. So let's take a look at how we would get to this. You click on create event command and you click on battle. Then you go over to chapter complete. Clicking on chapter complete will bring up another menu. You select the next chapter that the player goes to. If you only have one map, then it'll replay this map. You can specify if you don't want to save screen, if you want to go to the save screen, if you want the player to go to their base and save or do you want the player to go to their base without the option to save your difficulty will also come into play when switching maps so i've selected go to the base after we've completed the chapter we can either capture the castle and curse one of our members until they turn into a skeleton to beat this map and complete the chapter we can kill all the enemies, complete the chapter that way. Let's click on create event command, go over to battle, click on chapter complete, and we'll select the next chapter and we'll say go to base. So we can either beat the chapter by capturing the cursed castle and losing the hero, turning the hero into a skeleton, or we can defeat the enemy and keep both of our enemies and complete the chapter that way. Now we've got our auto event set up and we've got one switch on the map, one enemy on the map and two people. Let's go ahead and go back to top and test play the game. I've removed the 16 by 9 aspect ratio and changed the resolution. I'm going to jump back and forth to see how they look in different resolutions. And let's click on fight. We'll start the chapter. I'm going to move this guy down and attack him with a sword. We got a critical and hit, killed him on the first hit. And now, because we've defeated all the enemies, we see that all enemies are dead. But how does the game know 
that that's going to happen. Let's take a look at how to do that. Before I do that, how did the game know to show that all of the enemies were killed? Let's take a look at that. That could be tricky. We're going to click back on our auto events. And when we have enemies dead, we set up a new condition. Now this can get tricky, but if you read it literally the way that it's written, it makes sense. I've set up a page condition for this auto run event to happen when we say all the enemies are dead and we complete the chapter. The event conditions, I've went over to unit total tab. I've checked marked the enable unit total so that it will look for this as a condition. We're going to say when one enemy equals, we're saying the total of one enemy equaling one enemy. We can say less than one, more than one, but we're going to say one specifically enemy has died. Do you see how I've written this? Now I can write this in a different way as well. I can say when zero enemies are alive and it should work the same. Let's test that. If zero equal to zero enemies are alive, then run this auto event. I think this should work, but I haven't tested that yet. Let's test it. All enemies are dead and it works just the way that I thought. And it completes the chapter, lets you save the game, and it takes you to the base. Excellent! So that's basically it for how to set up your victory conditions and how to win a map. And in this tutorial, we covered how to do that with switches and how to do that with unit total events. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you have a special request, put it in the comments below. I'd love to see what you're having issues with so that we can, as a group, figure out how to solve this issue and maybe put it into a tutorial in the future. If you would like to support what I do on this channel, that would be highly appreciated. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming. If you want to come hang out and talk on Discord, there's a link in the description below. Remember to stay awesome, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.